VC, what's up? I wanted to come back with the uh, series classic, or I should say indie classic rock. I keep mixing that up or getting it backwards. But the idea with this series is to highlight indie rock that is sort of, I guess at this point, become classic rock or some of the sort of bigger names <clears throat> or classic albums that have come out of that era, mainly the 90s. Um, and then to highlight also a lesser known group or artist also from the indie rock era. Although today that, that entry, the lesser known artists will be somewhat more recent um, just because I've been playing them. But um, yeah, I like, I want to keep this series running, you know, maybe do it every couple of months or whatever it is, depending on, um, you know, how I'm feeling, what I'm listening to. And the artist we're going to talk about for the classic title, classic artist that you should know of, that's kind of the first part of this, so you probably know of, is American Analog Set. And we're listening to um, a new acquisition, their EP in the Darla Bliss Out series called Late One Sunday and the Following Morning. It's two long tracks. This came out on the Darla label. Um, the year is not in front of me, but it's Bliss Out Volume 9. I want to talk about that series um, on another video probably, but there's maybe, I think, 15 um, entries in this series for the Darla label out of Francisco. But this is just two long tracks. This instrumental is on side B and side A, features a vocal, and is sort of a... Um, um, a little more stereo lavish, American analog set. But I'm, the fe the record we're going to feature is not this one. I am going to show that because I've been cleaning up on getting the originals that I don't have anymore, or I didn't have by the American analog set, the Golden Band. I just got this on Emperor Jones. This is from '97, I think it is, or '98. First album, The Fun of Watching Fireworks. I'll probably talk about these some other time too. Um, but the American analog set. And I'm going to show you the record I'm featuring because I want to feature one specific record from them. But they're a band out of Fort Worth, Texas, mainly led by Andrew Kenny. I've talked about the band here and there. Uh, I know that Michael Muller, when we had, when we had our discussion, we talked a bunch about them. They were pretty um, sort of like mid mid level band for the time at, in the late '90s, early 2000s. Um, most people knew of them, but I think they were sort of not ever you know, of the upper echelon of sort of indie rock. But definitely had a following. They really they really live in that post-rock, a little bit of slow core, a little bit of uh, sort of folky indie rock. Um, yeah, they, they... Kraut rock also, of course, is a big part of what they do, what they did. But uh, the band disbanded in the mid... You know, like 2006, 2007, their last record is the only one I don't have on Arts and Crafts called Set Free. But I have everything else out of out of this band, and I've always just loved them for the yeah the tortoise-like sort of repetition and sort of um, warm groove that they employ. Um, really lovely, just great sound, just great sort of ambiance and feeling. Very soft vocals from Andrew Kenny. Not they don't necessarily rock per se, although they do have some tracks with that motoric rhythm that you'll hear. So a great band out of Texas, as I mentioned. Um, they're all the original pressings of only one pressing. They're all pretty expensive, though the ones I just showed came down in price, so I was able to grab those. But the other thing is Numero Group, from what I understand, is going to do a box set, a uh, whole retrospective of them, which I'll be nonetheless tempted by, even though I have the records. So a band that's deserving of more attention and more, uh, more focus, and that's what this video is, but the record I'm going to focus on is probably their most, um, we'll call it, pop or in, not even in pop but most sort of like song driven indie rock it was maybe their push for like bigger success and it came out September of 2001 uh, the American Analog set but obviously this is No By Heart this is kind of the one that most people will know I think and I think it's the one that deserves uh, it's the most consistent and focused uh, September 4th it came out actually and it was released on the Tiger Style label which they're record after this also was a uh, release on that promise of love and you can see this this one i think at some point let me decrease the corner here th there were like tons of dead stock copies of this going around for a while there were they they pressed a lot of these just because i think yeah they were going for you know shooting for the fences a bit um ben gibbard sings on one of the songs on here 
Um, mainly though, it's the band for Tiger Style, a label that was also the it was the label arm of the retail store called InSound, which at the time, early 2000s, late 90s, was a big. They were one of like the at the dawn of the internet in sound a label or um, a, a retailer that was really embracing the internet um, appealing to a lot of kids you know dudes my age at the time so anyway there they opened up a, a label in sound called tiger style and that's where this came in this is their first record for tiger style and tiger style had some great stuff like tristeza um sort of that ambient rock sound a little bit like a cranky uh, yeah, Tristeza was on there. Cool stuff that at the time was like a little bit hard to reach, a little bit hard to find. And yeah, this was their big one. It had like the most hooks to it. You know, the first track was just instantly grabbed you called Punk as Fuck. The Postman was certainly, I mean, this could have been a pop hit album. You know, it came out at the wrong time, September of 2001. But um, I love the final track. We're computerizing. We just don't need you anymore. Yeah, this is a great one if you don't know it. You know, if there's one record to look up for by this band, I think it's this. Although, it's interesting. This is maybe the their most focused and, you know, strongest from a wider perspective. But for me, maybe not my favorite, if that makes sense. You know, I, I, I love the first one that we showed, the fun of watching fireworks. And then uh, the one after this, Promise of Love. You know, I think it's this is the most consistent because it has the most... Like there's there's some sort of like lighter or sort of um, I wouldn't say letdown tracks, but songs that are not quite as memorable on other tracks that on other albums that are mixed in with stronger material. Uh, I have the rest of them over here. I won't pull them out right now, but um, I have um, I think one seven inch. They're mainly an LP band, and there's there's a few EPs I don't have. This is the uh, only EP I have. And I just got this, which is what we're listening to. Um, so a great band um, there's probably more to be said there's not a ton of info out there about them I mean they definitely did their fair amount of touring um, you know all the covers are really have a similar theme similar font and everything uh, yeah I'll just grab another one this is a great one and then uh, this one has maybe my favorite track on it my favorite track and it's called um, um, a hard to find track two so that is the American Alex set I just want to do a quick sort of um, feature about them if you like that softer kraut rock indie rock warm sort of spacious sound this is no by heart the one I recommend here indie classic rock For the next part, we're going to feature a different artist, um, which I will tell you about right now. This is the next artist I'm going to feature in this indie classic rock, um, a lesser known group um, from the indie rock era, though this band comes out of like the early 10s, 2009, 10 into 15. Um, it's led by a group or a solo performer, an artist named Tim Presley, I'm talking about White Fence. And I'm going to show you which ones I'm going to highlight as the, my feature. This is the first album, the one that um, initially got the got me into them. It's just self-titled, right? Yeah, it's self-titled. It's got a real sort of 60s vibe to it. And it's Tim Presley, who was involved in a lot of groups before he even started this. This one's got a nice insert, newspaper. Tim Presley started the band Darker My Love. He was in Strange Boys. He was, for a short period, was in the fall, around 2006. Out 
out of, I believe, San Francisco. Uh, Presley, the reason why I love him so much, it's certainly this garage psychedelia, but Presley knew how to make give the, a real 60s flair to what he was doing, you know, a real sort of tripped out psychedelia to all the songs. And that's kind of a theme throughout his records. And there are many, many, many White Fence records. I have just about, just about all of them. I think I do have them all. Um, recording for Wood Cyst. He did one for Drag City, which is excellent. This one, the first one, is on Make a Mess. I think most recently they're on Drag City. The last one was under Tim Presley's White Fence, it was called. Um, there's a Tim Presley solo record. He did records with Kate LeBon as Drinks. Those are good. But... We're going to focus on, like, the one record. Oh, this is technically a two-volume set. It's available as two single LPs, or you can find it as a double LP. But it is the uh, White Fence vo uh, um, and Family Perfume. This is volume one that we're listening to. Volume two, White Fence Family Perfume on Wood Cyst. A label run by the guy out of uh, from Woods. And, you know, Sid Barrett, you can hear it maybe on this track, um, a huge influence on everything he did or does. It's just got that, that je ne sais quoi that uh, Sid Barrett was able to sort of put forth as Pink Floyd. Certainly Pink Floyd in their pop psych mold, you know, great lo-fi, you know, it's very, very scrappy, but always catchy. These two volumes, they released them, I don't know why, they released them as separate releases, and then soon after they put it together as a double album. And we're listening to, even says here, volume one of two. And this was, um, I think it's 2009, it says. Anyway, it's of that era, it's not in front of me, but there are the words. Curious if Mr. Sam, the vinyl douche, knows this band, I bet he does. Uh, and that's the other thing. All recording, music, and songs by Tim Presley. Self-recorded, self-produced, self-written self-writ by himself. Um, yeah, he does do a few covers here and there, but mainly it's this sort of lysergic, sort of grungy pop, grungy psych pop. And um, volume two. Another insert on this one. Probably a similar looking insert with words, yeah. There's Presley. Like I said, he played bass in the fall for a while. Um, I don't know what he's doing. Most recently, it's been the drinks thing with Kate LeBon. And he, I think he retired maybe the White Fence moniker. Like I said, three, four years ago, there was a record called Tim Presley's White Fence. I think it was always meant as a solo project, though there's many White Fence records. It's clearly the thing he's done the most of. Uh, a few records are on Castle Face, the OC's label. There's a live in San Francisco on Castle Face. But yeah, this Volume 1 and Volume 2, Family Perfume. I mean, this gives is sort of the most well-rounded of what, of what the band does. I think these are available. I don't know for a fact. If they're not, I would check out any of the records. This first one is, is the most sort of lo-fi. Um... I won't, I won't get into track names or different tracks to check out. Hopefully you're getting the vibe of what's been put down here with this sample. And I just want to highlight him because I just don't think he's been discussed, Tim Presley. At least I've seen. Always with this artwork. Nice artwork. Um, yeah, he's he's been around many years, obviously. He's clearly you know a veteran of the scene. And I kind of feel like he's doing other things I don't even know about right now, but... Like I said, the Drinks records with Kate LeBon has been his most recent feature. But let me know if you've heard White Fence. Um, I'd like to geek out about White Fence a little bit. Um, I've, I feel like not many other people have really picked up with them or picked up onto what he does, or maybe he's a little overlooked. So that's where I'm going to end it here with Indie Classic Rock, American Analog Set, White Fence. Like I said, check these records out if you don't know them. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one. If you type on the right, is this misinterpreted? Lie on your side. It's just
with some men. 